Oops, that's not how you do it. We're always letting people know that we exist, but not why we exist. Well, that's why you watch the stream, you see. That's how you learn why. Yeah. We exist for their entertainment, and, you know, ours, but... And also watch all the VODs, subscribe, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh-huh. You guys are entertained by this? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Corby, do you do you have a YouTube or just Twitch? I do have a YouTube, yeah. I I'm gonna be uh, putting some of this stuff up on uh, okay. on the channel at some point. They're all stored away in there. I should go actually subscribe to that. What is uh is it just Corbinian or? Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking where they had it. It is this channel. They changed it. Damn it. Oh. Eighty Springer seven zero two five. Yeah, there it is. There's all your house uh, soup kit. Well, uh, most of them anyway. <laughs> most of them. The the tenth fleet has its own channel. Yep. Yep. I did not know that. Does like everybody just like collectively upload their videos there or something? Once upon a time, but... Ah. Okay. It's, well, I subscribe to Ads. Yeah, there, now, so. the, the fleet used to be, like, mostly run by mostly run by two or three people, and at that time, I think it was more regular. And... Of course, this is the link Good to the... Because I think both Prax and Pend use their own channel. Yeah. And also for VODs, I leave some of the stuff up on Twitch for a while because I'm an affiliate with them, so I have to leave my stuff up with them for a while first before it goes into the archive. Uh, gotcha. I don't know how useful posting the Twitch link here is. Oh, just so you could find it. <laughs> oh, okay. I was, <laughs> I was about to say, I, I think we've already joined. You'd better know. Uh, hello, everyone. This is the Electric Metropolis Video Game Tour. I'm A.D. Springer, also known as Corbinian, and we're playing yet another session of Traveler 5. And we will get things rolling with our introduction. Scroll, 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 scroll. It is the year, it is 1111 of Imperial Reckoning of the Third Imperium. The Third Imperium is in the height of its golden age, enjoying the rulership of Emperor Strephon Elia Akalakoi. Long may he reign. It has been a full year since the Armistice ended the Fifth Frontier War between the Jordani Consulate and the Third Imperium. With the return to status quo de jour, but de facto, the Sword Worlds Confederation have lost many of its worlds to become a new Imperial client state formed in the aftermath. A year post-bellum in the Spinward Marchers sector has seen a dynamic shift of recovery, renewal, and opportunity for many a traveler to benefit from, not the least of which, the lifting of the sector-wide amber status by the Traveler's Aid Society. Between the interests of the Mentalist Zodani, the Imperials with their Darien Confederation allies, seeking to uphold their self-appointed warrant of restoration, and the fiercely independent sword worlders, the will of humanity is made manifest in courts of high pageantry, to the respectable private courts of TAS member lounges, to courts low and dark of spacer bars. Among the million stars, we focus upon one sword world known as Anduril. As the far trader, you are the uh, travelers are aboard begins to approach and dock for a period of time to refuel, take off new, uh, take sell some of their cargo, uh, let off some of their passengers, and hopefully get new ones. And the Baronet Ipilifatil has the opportunity to speak once more with uh, the Ursine Tarvin Arctos and the Sword Worlder, Lieutenant Colonel Ervor Angut's daughter. So. 
Oh, yes. Uh, greetings. How fair you, How fair is the journey for you? Oh, yeah, that's why he now has the opportunity, because he was in the lowly middle class. I was, in <laughs> fact. <laughs> it's it's nice one? to see that he survived it. It's, it's not that bad. He just doesn't have a bidet. Well, we all have to make sacrifices, don't we? <laughs> Did anything happen on the like after I left last uh, last uh, session? Did anything happen to you guys on the way, or was it just like you got to a planet, did some shopping, moved on? I I had this really unique interpretation of a uh, of a dish that included massive amounts of hair. <laughs> ah. Although I didn't get to try it as apparently it was not fit for consumption. I would think so. Well, they told me the chef was highly skilled, so I assumed it was part of the dish. Was it but in reality was the it chef then was or was it not then? I don't know. I haven't. Tarvin, did you have a chance to talk with the chef about that dish? Hmm? What dish? The dish with the hair in it. Oh. Uh, I'm not aware of that. I, I'm kind of used to hair in my food. Oh. <laughs> hair mean, in or on your food? Either way. So, other than that, lively, uh, what is this? Other than that, interesting food, uh, other than interesting food items, was a normal journey for you two? It was a comfortable journey. Nothing much to report, really. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing, nothing much on my end, either. Except becoming more aware of how your sonic powers work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I don't need to talk about that quite yet. <laughs> oh yeah, you, y'all you figured out what your powers actually are. Uh, we 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 did yes, and I have many fun possibilities in the future. Mm -hmm. We talked about like potentially pulling the pin out of a grenade that somebody else is wearing, or you know teleporting weapons out of people's hands. It'll be great. But also like steal people's um what's the word? <laughs> oh, I am failing at words today. Um their attributes. You can like take somebody's attribute and transfer it to like yourself or somebody else. How does that work? Uh psionics. <laughs> Short answer? Psionics. It, yes, yes. It, it, is it a specific attribute? Oh yeah, I can choose one. So I could take like strength, dexterity, endurance, your sanity. So have we actually arrived at Arundel yet? Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's why we're You're... interacting is because we're like uh, at the port. Yeah, people are are uh, disembarking and heading out and stuff, and the the crew's moving about. So yeah, let's. Uh, the bear's going to see a member check in with uh, TAS and see what news and rumors might be. Yeah, out there now that we're in the sword world. Oh, is there a? I don't think I had a contact in Arundel, did I? Uh, Narsal, I believe it is. Which we have to jump to next. Yeah, so I can get my information at the next planet. Uh. Through the TAS, uh, uh, Tarbin is able to learn that the Sword World Confederation is actually having a bit of a worker uh, drain, <clears throat> and both skilled and unskilled, mainly because a lot of the resources of the Confederation have been are 
basically tapped out. Like e- even a year later after the armistice, they're still kind of re- I- recovering and catching their breath, breath from the war. Um, and there are... TES does warn that some... Uh, there are rumors that there are sword wielder... Uh, so some sword worlder uh, naval officers have turned Corsair uh, in desperation because even the military is struggling to be uh, uh, adequately uh, paid. Uh, in specific, they seem to be targeting Imperial and uh, Darien ships. They are leaving the Jordani alone because those Jordani, even though those Jordani are uh, in their protectorate uh, the stage in the, uh, well, they've they're intervening in uh, Sword World or Space. They are considered allies of the Sword Worlds. So they aren't the target. However, there is no official statement by the Sword Worlds Confederation that these are privateers, that they are sanctioned by any particular planet. But then again, a uh, half ship will travel. A Corsair needs not government approval necessarily. If they stay out of Sword World space, uh, and stay away from naval bases, they're, they'll le- largely be left alone. So all travelers are being advised to be cautious uh, when uh, aboard Imperial uh, ships are heading into the from the Sword Worlds into the Darien Confederation. Oh, that thing we're Fair doing enough. in, like, two weeks? <laughs> Where This is a Sword Worlds charted ship, though? Or is it not? It is. It's a Sword Worlds ship. That doesn't mean they won't attack us. It just means we're not what the Traveler Society thinks is a primary target. Right. Fingers crossed, at least. And the spaceport itself... I don't know if I can pull up the lines for it. Find it again. Where'd I put it? Looks like it's a B, lower average imperial. There we go. So from out the uh, spaceport windows, you are in the spaceport, uh, the starport Hofnir, uh, in the Kleinland, uh, Kleinland uh, continent. So you have a nice view of a nearby uh, bay and the nearby star city. Uh, the world itself seems to be uh, the no, uh, you're you'd be alerted uh, that the atmosphere outside of Starport is fairly dense, very heavy, uh, uh, thick air. If you get what I mean. So every, you know, it always feels particularly humid. Every breath kind of takes an extra bit of effort to take in just because there's, it just feels a lot more, it feels like it's a, it's adulterated. It's not adulterated to the point of being tainted, but it is kind of, um, there's a lot of other things in the air that kind of, uh, take up one's, uh, that one notices. Uh, the gravity is fairly high, even in, on, in the starport. Uh, it's about 1.5 Gs, so you're feeling it's uh, f- uh, like half again. You feel half again heavier than normal. Uh, um, seems a very bustling and busy starport with lots of signs in various languages. I mean, of course, uh, Sagmal and Valani and Zent and uh, so on. Any uh, any Zodani traders nearby? Uh, there are not. Okay. There's some well, Zodani like shops, but there's no free, there's no free traders here. As okay. a note, I, I mean, mo- mo- catch any more of those cults. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, you do see that the, in Starport there would be a chapel for the uh, a, a a temple for the Asir, um, but you wouldn't see you don't see anything uh, any uh, even lip service to uh, the Jordani faiths. Okay. 
Uh, two questions. One, what is the what are the trade classifications, and does this place have a naval base? Uh, it does have a naval base. It is a rich pre-agricultural, pre-high population world. Oh, I think those are. Wait, you said agricultural? Pre-agricultural. Pre-agricultural. Yep. Oh, I didn't even know that was a possibility. <laughs> I know there's pre-industrial is. Because is pre-agricultural like pre hunter-gatherer. Well, they may they may be in the process of like starting large scale agricultural. It doesn't mean they're hunter gatherer. Like it doesn't mean they're back in time. Oh. And tech. Like a pre industrial world doesn't have to be a world that's just coming into the 18th century. It could be a world that people haven't had it's, the time yet to fully industrialize. Yeah, they they just don't have the population to support large scale agricultural like they can take care of themselves but they can't really be a, a planet that would be able to offload their agricultural goods to other planets i thought you said it was high population uh pre-high population and what was the third one a uh, rich so it's a very comfortable and attractive oh, okay. planet so people like living here i was about to say if it was agricultural and high population i might consider some trading but uh, rich is the only trade good that's going to affect trade goods and it's going to raise the value so again, not a good place to do trades uh, well I'd like to I'd like to see if I can go schedule a certification for how long are we going to be here? Uh, did the steward say? Uh, for about five days. Okay, so that's enough time to get to tr to see if I can get one scheduled and have time to study. So yeah, I'd like to work on that. Okay. So to certify. You do need the naval base. Um, uh, there isn't a naval base attachment to the starport. If you wanted to get certified, you'd have to go to the base itself. Uh, can I can I arrange transportation and be back before the ship leaves? Uh, it's quite possible, yeah. Oh, before we go further, uh, we should roll intuitions. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, all of you, all four of you, uh, roll 2d6. Boop. Oh, no. <laughs> Ipafatil, you have seven insight. Ooh. Handy. So you would roll... Uh, at 7, you'd roll 2d6. Once you get to 6 and lower, you roll 1d6. You can use this to ask me, why don't we try blank? You're trying to pu see or puzzle out. Your character may be able to puzzle out or see something. Uh, okay. They wouldn't otherwise. Uh, second highest is Tarvin Arctos. Arctos has 6 curiosity. Uh, so you only have one die uh, for now. Uh, why is that blank? So you could ask something like that. And Mike, with your uh, character who will be meeting soon, uh, they have three luck. Um, so if your character fails at a roll uh, during this session, uh, you can roll a single D sight, a D6. And if you roll three or lower, you will you would still fail, but you can blunt the negative effects. So it, it isn't nearly as bad as it would have been. And each time you roll one of these intuitions, they go down by one. So if you Win, lose or win um, if you roll if you don't roll the three or lower then it goes down to two goes down to one and eventually zero alright that said uh, Hervor you want to arrange for 
some work, uh, some certification, and reasonable accommodation. <coughs> Pardon me, sorry. Um, you are a sword worlder, so it's not going to be too hard. It's going to be a two-die check of um, intelligence using uh, two-die uh, bureaucrat intelligence, which probably this is hard for you, so three. Yeah. To see if you can find an opening that's suitable that it won't take you longer than the ship leaving. As a reminder, of course, the current date is 138 of the current year. Uh... Is there any um, anywhere along the way that an appropriate uh, application of credits might smooth the attempt? You could s to get an appointment or to make the certification easier. No, just to arrange transportation, get jump jump ahead in line on grabbing a ship or getting a hotel room. Not cheating on the test, just trying to get there and get back. Um, I would take that as uh, streetwise instead. Um, okay. and change. for well, the trade's pretty good. Uh, for each say actually let's see you can reduce this to a two die task for uh, say a hundred credits to a one die task for 500 credits because you're basically just paying for better accommodations, paying the express fee and so on. Yeah, I'll, I'll just pay that because there's... The, um, the three die task is going to be really hard. The two die task is probably fine, but there's not many there's like one more opportunity i have to do this reasonably before darian space so i'd rather just part with the five it was 500 500 yep yeah i'd just rather part with the credits and get it done uh on a single d6 can you fail no okay so off you go you're able to arrange for that by smoothing a few uh palms and get a grab lifter uh over to the nearby naval base uh, to which, what certification are you attempting to get? A master level certification as a fighter. All right. Uh, you owe me five D6. Uh, I am going to spend the day before cramming though, which is why I asked if I had enough time to study before the test. You goes. you would, yeah, since you, you succeeded, you may you, you gave yourself extra time. So you owe me three dice for cramming before the test. And this is three dice under sixteen. As you go to like a nearby to a nearby uh sparring area and practice your very you know, go to a range and shoot a bit and practice on fighting dummies and so on. And this gives me good flex, which I think is uh, the the higher die minus the lower die. Correct. You can't get you can't get less than zero. Right. Uh so your good flux Am is... I allowed hmm? Am I allowed am I allowed to see the good flux before I take the test? Like Yep. If I don't feel like I the studying was good, I just don't take the test. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the reason the reason I ask is because 
the more and more I try, I get hit by penalties. So if I don't feel like this was a good study session, I don't want to commit to taking the test. But you're good. You have a good flux of five, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it it oh, there's it's it can't be higher than this. That's as good as it gets. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. This actually, this is the best chance I'll ever have. There's nothing I can do to get a better chance. So you so, go to the naval base and uh, go through their master course, fighting the best of their fighters and running through obstacle courses, shooting various weapons. Because you're doing fighter, right? So you're doing a variety of tasks yeah. to show that you're to be certified by the by the sword sword world marines that you're a master fighter. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, is it still int? I think last time it was int because you said this was like more theoretical than practical because of it was a master certification not a not like a competent certification yeah because you're also being tested on theory and uh thinking out and seeing through the traps and seeing the tricks that they're leaving for you it's like wait i should be fighting this guy not that guy or that's my objective not that guy so this is 5d i can ignore that guy he just has a pistol i'm in i'm in heavy armor i can just ignore that one uh, 5D less than 21. And that's it. You are now a certified master fighter, uh, according to the Sword World uh, Marine uh, Corps of Anduril. And because this is civilian, like this, this is likely to transfer across polity or it would yeah cuz you're you you're cuz the marines already know what your skill level is it's like well we have to certify you for a generic for a interstellar uh interpolity uh market so you're you're privately certified which is they're the ones who test <laughs> So yeah, Hervor's off testing and going through a difficult uh, course. What are okay. what? Is, hmm? I, I was gonna ask if, as that finishes up, I could send a message that a party needs to be arranged. Ha! Huh. <laughs> when I get back. Certainly could. What is uh, Ibla Fatil or Tarbin Arctos up to? Hmm. Good question. Um. Probably just walking around, seeing the sights. Um, is not anything objective-wise he's looking for. Okay. Maybe keeping his mind open a little bit, so if he gets any psychic pings, he might go investigate that. But otherwise, he's just walking about. And Tarvin will take the time to, at the uh, TAS, to check his mail, update his... Uh, favorite entertainment feeds with his uh, with the latest episodes or whatever. Um, you know, download the most recent copies of you know Ursine Ar Archaeology Today and uh, Gourmand to the Stars and just kind of update all of his reading and entertainment op options on his personal computer for the next leg of the journey. Uh, Ibla Fatil, give me uh, five. D6 using your um, perception. Your side perception. Oh boy. Okay. Wait, so am I trying to get under 30? Is that how that works? Double checking. I believe that's correct, but I'm going to make sure I'm not lying to you. What are you trying to do? He's testing his psi awareness. Oh, okay. This oh, fighty sense is going off. Potentially. Please do not whip all over the spaceport. <laughs> if you're going to whip, do it in the privacy of your own cabin and behind the lot and make sure the door is locked. <laughs> um. So... And the 
range, I'll note the range a bit, that will affect your number a little bit. Because you're not seeing stuff that's neck right next to you or that you're touching. So 30... Yes. Uh, you'll actually add an additional five to that number because you're sensing people. Cool. Okay. So I'm trying to so five d six trying to get under thirty five. Wait, sorry, I got that backwards. Range minus size. Duh. Sorry. Hold on. Uh, range. Oh, never mind. It's just thirty flat because it's within a kilometer, and you're thinking people size. So never mind. <clears throat> 5d6, trying to get under 30. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't that... 5d6 is 30, right? Yeah, 5d6 is 30. So I just have to roll not all six, not all sixes. Three sixes is what you're trying to avoid. Okay, avoid three sixes. Here we go. Or get three ones, because then you would have had an exceptional success. Nah, darn. So um... Close. So during your wanderings around, um, there are a variety of people who are uh, not shielded to Cyanix, so you get a variety of feelings coming and going. Um, and the general feeling is a certain level of exhaustion uh, from people. Um, that's the aura you feel off of most people around you. Um, the only ones that aren't are people who are visiting, travelers who are coming and going, and traders who are coming and going. Um, but uh, the one that you will notice uh, that you will that you will sense is a intelligent and strong mind that is uh, boarding the uh, far trader that you're going on. Oh. Very focused. Okay, well, Compared let's to everyone go. Else. Let's go see what that's about then. Uh, you find yourself in the presence of one of the far trader officers. Uh, that uh, they're a gunnery officer who kind of looks over at you and uh, says, uh, "Can I help you, Baronet?" When you say I felt like an intelligent, focused mind, is that just like, it's like they stuck out from everyone else, or was yep. there something else there? They stuck out from everyone else. Okay. Okay. Because everybody else, right? Because everybody else was like a general. Just I fatigued. will say that. You know, and no, I'll, I'll see where the. They are. They stand out from the rest of the crew. They're an intelligent uh, and strong mind. I'm trying to think of a. Have I met him before on the ship? Like, have we passed you... it all? Or. Uh yeah, you have. You would have ran into them once or twice on the deck. Gunnery officers don't have much to do unless the ship's being shot at, uh, beyond maintenance. So they're basically wandering around the ship as uh, ad hoc security. Gotcha, gotcha. So would I know his name? Uh, you would, actually. That would be a reasonable thing for you to know. Let me get you their name. As I click on everything but what I need. <laughs> <laughs> Name generator, go! A gunnery officer near. Near. A, okay. A sword worlder. Oh, they're sword worlder. Not to okay. be confused with the gunnery officer close, as in danger <laughs> close. <laughs> he he probably oh. didn't survive because he let everyone get danger close. <laughs> this is gunnery officer near. This is gunnery officer far. 
near, far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gonna go here. Uh, all right. Um, uh, do anything? Oh, no, I was uh, just taking a tour of the spaceport, and it appears we managed to arrive back at the ship at the same time. Uh, how's the journey been for you? It has been uneventful, which is always good for my line of work. Agreed. And actually, I'm going to fire a social encounter with this guy for you. You might learn oh. something from them. Because <clears throat> you're, you're trying okay. to talk to them and learn something from them, so that would be a... Yeah, yeah. That's what that would fall under. Not personal combat. Wait, please, no. I'm gonna punch this guy in the nose. Like, uh, <laughs> please don't. If you have fighter six, it's always a good option. <laughs> I um, have fighter zero. Yeah, not a good option. It's definitely not a good option. So you're looking at, you're querying the person. You're just asking uh, questions about them. You're trying to learn something from them. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's two dice. Um, okay. You're trying to be a charming sort. You seem to be trying to be friendly and so on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, unfortunately, that's for persuading, so you'd fall under, Darn. in that case, active listening. You're listening to them talk about their day and so on, and they're like, well, hey, if you're, if you're going to listen to me talk, I'll talk. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are looking at... Uh, tactics wise, uh, comment. Oh yeah, none of them would apply anyway because you're just you're just listening to them talk. Yeah. The five laws. Um. It doesn't matter with query; they're all plus one. Oh, well, that's true, yep. So no matter what it is, it's just plus one. Uh, it would fall under superiority, just so you know, for later, if you do another social with them. Because you are, you do outrank them on social standing. Even though you're Jodani and they're sword worlder, you are higher in social strata than they are. So they're trying not to, it's in their interest not to tick you off. Yeah. Uh, if they don't have to. Um, I'm also a paying, well, te technically paying, air quotes. Customer. Yeah, you're a paying passenger, yeah, for multiple trips, so you know. Yeah, long haul. Uh, the rest really don't apply. So you owe me two uh, d six. You're trying to get four or lower. Oh boy! <laughs> well, somehow I get the feeling that's probably not going to happen. Okay. Is it? Um. Oh, never mind. I was about to say maybe this is deliberate for another tactic, but th there are no tactics you can use. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, nothing ventured. Yeah. No, that's one of those dice is a four. Uh, yeah. No. You, you. You. They tell you about stuff, but uh, nothing that's particularly. It's niceties and small talk, but nothing that's probative. Okay. All right, well, good to know he's uh, strong-willed. If we ever get boarded, I'm, I'm gonna find that guy. <laughs> uh, and Tarbin was just getting uh, updating himself on the, the day-to-day -day and just his news and so on. That was my understanding. Um. Yeah. He was also, you know, for the next couple weeks of voyages, I'm taking the opportunity for the. <laughs> TAS lounge to, you know, I, I figure as a TAS member, this would be where I'd come for my, you know, to download my subscriptions to whatever, you know, magazines, entertainment service, or whatever, um, as they kind of filter through. So, yeah, collect my, you know, uh, news and magazine subscriptions, entertainments uh, for the voyage, uh, just kind of downloading all of my mail and whatnot. Um, I will note that you do learn that um, one thing that sticks out, and you're not entirely sure why, but, you know, it's just one of those things you see when you're reading the news. Um, 
You recall that there was there's more news about the High Federation Vaxu Corporation and uh, the purchase of their local branch office uh, in the Sword World uh, subsector uh, by Susag. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of reorganization of the uh, personnel and so on, uh, specifically function uh, f- uh, focusing on the. Uh, Workers' union uh, that represent the area, uh, putting in new functionaries and taking out old ones, that sort of thing, which isn't terribly popular. Um, they are trying to put in a lot more locals, so sword worlders and um, Darians and Imperials and so on. The thing is, the High Federation is based well out of the High Federation, so a lot of the people who work for that corporation work for it are. Like basically, have traversed across the stars to get here and work here, and use their a special ex- a variety of expertise. But they have very strong labor laws in the High Federation, which the SUSAG doesn't quite isn't quite smiling upon. And the Travelers Aid Society thinks that's going to become an issue for them. It hasn't yet, but everyone in the lounge is like, "Yeah, that they're they're asking for trouble." I mean, sure, they're not going to go to war with the High Federation over this, but you're not making friends with people who used to work. For that corporation. Right. Uh, And apparently the only reason that really happened uh, is because there was some sort of economic disaster back on uh, Glia where there are home offices. So the home office had to sell off some of their stuff to try to soak the costs. And it's like, well, you know, the Sword World branch is pretty far away it's a, it's on the other side of the bloody uh, known stars so okay. better that than one of their core ones so upshot of that is there's going to be uh, people from the High Federation or who have been employed by the High Federation for this back suit company uh, looking for work and kind of foot loose mm-hmm. okay so a lot, a lot of captains, a lot of uh, captains and uh, traveler groups are like, heck yeah, we're looking for if we, we need a vac suit specialist, we can, we're pretty sure we're gonna get some because that's where right. some of the best vac suit operators are a work out of. That's fair enough. And I will then ask for Hervor <laughs> and Iblafatil to give me three d six endurance. Uh, because you left the starport. Did I leave? Oh, I, oh. Because I, I um, <laughs> uh, travel mostly in uh, a suit which increases my strength to superhuman levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that a problem? I mean, I assume I probably had to take it off for the duration of the test, but outside of the test, right? Yeah, during the test, that's what would have happened. Because you're around uh, other sword worlders from this planet. Next time I need to specify not leaving the the starport on Mm -hmm. planets like this. Oh boy, (laughs) my endurance is an eight. Here we go. Oh man, so my bear stayed in the starport. (laughs) I will bow to your wisdom next time. (laughs) that calculation of is there anything outside of the TAS lounge that I really need on this planet? No. Okay. <laughs> I will give you uh, some fl- some good flux. I roll flux to see if anything good uh, for um, the lieutenant colonel, which it may not matter, but I was going to give you plus five to your target number. <laughs> I think you're fine for your endurance. Yeah. Uh, no, actually. No, my endurance is a six. But if you've given me a plus five, then yes, I still cool. passed. Yeah, due to the high health standards and the cleanliness of the naval base and the uh, amount of money you spent to stay in certain places, yeah, you seem fit as a fiddle. You seem fine. You didn't pick up anything on your way uh, before you come back to the ship. Oh, this. Oh, uh, so <laughs> this is my can. This is my confusion. I thought you were hitting us with one and a half times gravity, which was why I was talking about the suit. You were talking about the part 
you talked about the atmosphere having stuff in it. No, no, it's, it's something else. You guys learned about it last time. <clears throat> oh, the sick The plague! The freaking yeah. plague! <laughs> Remember? Never get off the ship or starport? It was worth it. Next time, I will specify that I'm wandering around in the starport. Yeah, because the minute you step out to Star City, it's you, you're exposed. That's where the local populace and travelers go. But if you just stay in the starport, it's a very closed system. Yeah. But as the three of you begin to uh, get ready to re-embark upon the uh, ship, you encounter rather interesting Sophant. Interesting Sophant, you say. You encounter a six-limbed uh, creature with various eye stalks sprouting out, out of one of its partic uh, one particular appendage that seems to be lifted up and it's acting like a head, but it's still a a, a manipulating mouth sort of thing. Uh, you recognize a hiver very far from home who and for neok n you are uh you've heard that there's work uh because you've been uh let go from uh the hiver uh from the hive corporation uh from the vaccine corporation rather um there you've heard there's work there's gonna be a lot of big work going on in the dairy and confederation so you've managed to get passage to a far, on a far traveler heading that direction because really there's no work here and you're just kind of spinning your wheels and at this point fighting uh susag really isn't worth your time anymore you have you know you got you have your thirty thousand. you have your gold watch it's time to start traveling and figure out what you're gonna do and uh, this planet is not the planet of opportunity because the sword worlders are struggling economically so that no one's hiring here well good riddance I suppose <clears throat> this uh what, what with the plague and all uh, not that I not that I think that I might be susceptible all that much but you know I don't know. I might... give, uh, give me three di uh, 3d6 check against your endurance. Alright. Yeah, it, it's a psionic plague. Your eye stalks feel a little itchy. Um, you feel kind of in the dumps a bit, but uh, otherwise you're, you know, maybe it's the atmosphere I'm that's messing fine. with you. I'm fine. It's all good. Excuse me, I just got itch, itch. And the ice stalks rub together. <laughs> so the, this hiver is boarding uh, the same vessel we are. Yep. Oh, cool. Take the opportunity to talk to him as we travel in the lounge. Uh, and actually, uh, character descriptions, because you this I think this is the first time you, your characters are actually interacting with each other. Yeah. Uh, well, you'll see, Herivor. Although a physical description of Herivor isn't apt at the moment because. Outside of the ship, Paravor mostly travels around in a suit of battle armor, which is not, um, it's not like a huge suit, because at, at battle armor level, it's more just form-fitting, because it's not structured, um, but it does obscure Paravor's features. Uh, and Tarbin is uh, an Ursa, uh, descendant of uh, gene-engineered uh, grizzly bears. Uh, basically still looks like a grizzly bear, uh, except the uh, four limbs end in much more uh, dexterous and more hand-looking uh, hands with fully opposable thumbs. Uh, but are still, you know, dinner state, dinner uh, plate sized murder mittens when it comes down to it. Um, mm -hmm. He uh, 
the, the Ursa retained their ability to walk on all fours, uh, but also we can walk upright. So standing upright, he's about, actually, I have it down and I can give it to you in meters, which might be better Aren't than like feet. Nine Both feet tall? Fine. Okay. So he's about uh, nine feet tall. So close uh, to three meters. It's close yeah. to three meters tall, yeah. Um, when he's on his hind legs. Yeah, generally doesn't wear clothes, so to speak. Uh, you know, uh, belts and bandoliers and, you know, with pouches hanging off, whatever. I'm guessing a little red shirt every once in a while. Right, every right. Once every once in a while. Right. <laughs> to, to keep the honey from his fur. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if he's wearing something, it's usually a back suit, but he hasn't really had the need to wear a back suit very recently. Um, but yeah, so a big old grizzly bear that can talk. And then Lifetal is, uh, I mean, he's a Jodani and they're typically taller, so he's like six feet, which I think is, that's almost two meters. Yeah, so. I mean, no. No. But yeah. Yeah. I, I get where you're going. Uh, yeah. six, feet, anyway. six feet is uh, 180 centimeters. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're you're thinking yards. Yards are in the right, yards are right. Feet. Yards are ah. Meters are two and a half feet. I was part of that weird exploratory thing where they tried to teach us both metric system and imperial system at the same time. It did not work, evidently. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, yeah. So he's on the six foot. Um. He's got the uh, he's typical Zodani dress, so he's got like they uh, got, he's got the turban, which you know they used to make themselves look taller because that's necessary. Uh, and then he also has like the cape. He's a he's a baronet, so he's got the look of a nobleman about him. Well, not a nobleman would necessarily translate into hyper society, but I've been around. Oh yes, yes. All right, uh, and Neoken is uh, is a hiver. Uh, I am unsure about the color of him. Uh, like, uh, hmm. Picture a muted trans flag. He's mostly That's... pale with the uh, blue and pink uh, segments. Uh, very muted nearly imperceptible unless he's entirely unclothed I put a but yeah. image in uh, of a oh yeah hivers okay, are that's... very distinct <laughs> that's mildly terrifying yeah they are uh, for being a cre for being a species that thrive in social situations they look terrifying <laughs> Uh, how, how do they talk? They don't necessarily. That's why. That, that's what uh, I was gonna go uh, talk to Corbinia about. Corbinia about. They have voters or vote coders. Yeah. yeah, there'd be a device on their chest or on their back that uh, they'd make noises, and then it would. You would hear a somewhat uh, uh, synthesized voice vo uh, vocalizing the, the what they're trying to say. Yeah, so oh. uh, a low gurgling followed by greetings. Greetings. Are you also going on the spaceship? We are, yes. Good. I am looking for work. Work is necessary. What kind of work do you do? Murder. And there is a pre-programmed presentation about like, my name is Neogen, I am a vac suit specialist and I, formerly a representative of the vac suit workers union uh, here on where we are at currently hit <laughs> <laughs> us with your resume <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's ready 
I have it's supposed to add an insert me. world here. <laughs> uh, I used to work on this project, but these days I teach black suit use mostly. Most days uh. I just yell at people who don't know how to use a vac suit so that they learn to use a vac suit. So do you have much actual practical EVA experience? Oh, yes. Many years of service. I used to work for uh, this company that Corbinian talked about earlier that I forgot the name of. I Federation Vac Suit Corporation. Mm. Yes. Any other uh, starship skills that might be applicable to a <clears throat> traveling group? Well, if you allow me a moment to look over my notes, I will be back with you. <laughs> you <can't> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I can fill that in for you if you want, because you have a pre-programmed thing in your vocator. Yes, please. Uh, this hiver uh, has some familiarity with advocacy and legal systems mm. as part of their time as a representative. They have familiarity with brokerage, communications, and commu computer systems, as well as general familiarity with driving various ground vehicles, both wheeled and not. They are also a growing leader of other workers, primarily in the supervisory role. Uh, some familiarity with uh, the common trades of interstellar travel, a master vac suit operator, as has been noted earlier, an astrogator of relevant uh, starship skill, as well as uh, ability to be of assistance in jump drive engineering and uh, maintenance. There's also some, uh, as a hobby, uh, this hiver has also taken upon themselves to uh, learn the trades of gravitics, as well as general uh, private crafts. Also a noted uh, understander of biologics and biology, uh, specifically biology. That is a very well-versed hiver. Yes, I pride myself about being we, uh, good at things. We tend to like you when you're good at things. We travel with a noted published researcher in uh, biology, so you might enjoy talking to him. And I would we're... Much appreciate the the, in, um, the introduction. And we're. Uh actually on our way to Darien, the planet in the Darien Confederacy. Uh, we are, most of us recently retired and several of us uh, had ship share. So we are commissioning the building of a ship there. Um, and our, we do have another space on the crew if you'd be interested. That sounds very fun. My search for a job might be concluded. Mm. Uh, we we still have to go have have this over drinks. Yeah, yes. we still have to go through the formal process of actually forming a corporation that could hire you, but <laughs> details. Well, you could always form a union. I know a lot about unions. <laughs> <laughs> Did you you form a union with five four pe five people? Yeah, Hairfloor understands unions as that thing we're supposed to break up when they get to a uh, company. <laughs> so oh, oh. <laughs> I don't think so. Wait, hang on. Do they do they have unions in the Jodani consulate? Yeah. Okay. I was like, I don't know if that's a thing that's allowed to exist. That aren't slaves. There no. are unions. Or, you know, it depends how big Susag's presence is. <laughs> in the Jodani, oh among the Jodani, there would be like lesser consulates. So that would be a a commercial lesser consulate would be the equivalent of a union. Uh, okay, but it works kind of different because of how that because of how their society is structured. But same difference culturally speaking. Okay, cool. But yes, anywhere there are workers that aren't slaves, there are unions. Yeah, that's a fair point. Um, yes, we're still working on how to set up the corporation. However, at this point, joining would pretty much make you in on the ground floor, as it were. Um, 
I prefer working on the floor, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, be that floor inside or outside of a starship. Very good. You do have a, a very highly desirable skill set for us. I, hmm. These days I aim to travel, but usually I would say I aim to please. Hmm. Well, one of our first big concerns, of course, will be the best way to incorporate, perhaps with your knowledge of advocacy, you might be able to assist us with that. Of course. Anything you need, I can write that up right away for you, sir. Uh, Sir is sarcastic. <laughs> well, does the, does the vocoder? Add yeah, that I'm not. I'm not sure how he... this is gonna work out because we definitely want to re retain shareholder rights in the ship, and we're asking the <laughs> the very the anti union Unitar uh, uh union leader to write our corporate. Laws. No, no, it, it, it'll work out fine because we're just going to immediately enfold him into the management structure. And so, you know. Oh, we're going to try to buy him out. Oh, no, you, you were automatically buying him out. He's not, there's going to be nobody for him to unionize because he'll be in management. But once again, so the corporation of five people. <laughs> suggest you move away a little bit. <laughs> uh, well, are you traveling a high passage or medium passage? Medium. Uh, then I think you should uh, you should continue talking the details over with uh, Iblin Fatil here. Love of how course. it's just I love how it's I'm become sure canon that, like... that nobody can pronounce my name. I, I'm pretty sure I said exactly what Corbinian says. Iblin Fatil. Iblifital. Iblifital. I will um, just refer to you with your title, Baronet. That will work. And so it's N Neok N? Yes. Union Rep, Neok N, at your service. Do you prefer the title with the name or just the name? You are free to use whatever name you want to. As long as it's not during negotiations, then I will require Union Rep before. Understood. Yeah. When it comes to incorporation, we're definitely interested in incorporating in a system or subsector that gives us uh, the best tax advantages. Well, I would recommend Hiver societies. Those are very good. <laughs> Is it? Wouldn't that be in the neighborhood of a hundred to three hundred jumps from here? <laughs> well, oh, yes, but the, the yeah, I don't... benefits are very good for the planets where your taxes will be going. I don't really have 30 years to jump across the empire <laughs> would probably i would probably guess that you know you could technically go to like a consulate or you know for, for any of these polities um to you know there's they probably everybody does a fairly decent business in you know registering corporations you know the like if the Hiver is the Hiver place really is a good place to register for tax purposes, then they probably their their consulates will have ways for you to do that. But but no, what what I'm what I would like for you to find out is you know for the company's benefit, where is the best place for us to uh, incorporate uh, that has the most advantageous tax structure for the five of us and our company? That's a good question. Uh, you can give me <clears throat> education plus advocate uh, with three dice. Uh, this is hard because that's higher than your advocate, so it'd be 46. 46. With a target number of. Uh, it's education A, so I have a 10. 10 plus 2, 12. All right. Gosh darn it. Oh, that was so close. 
Yeah, the, the difficulty you're finding is that you're dealing... When they explain a little bit about their the composition of their uh, traveling group, uh, you have a two Imperials, a scholar and a uh, former naval officer, former scout. You have a Jodani noble, who is still part of the nobility in the consulate, and a border world retired marine. And yourself, a high federation hiver, uh, yeah, you're going to need to consult the law library to find the best case for all of you involved. Given the fact that we are, as they say, strange bedfellows, we might need to um, look up how to actually do this. I don't have the knowledge on the top of my headstock. I imagine. Uh, well, once the, we get to Darien, the archives right. will be able to help. Yes, yeah, since Darien is, is so advanced, they'll probably have a very extensive uh, financial and legal library to, to consult on other things. And a mainframe that can <laughs> actually do that. <laughs> do this for you. Well, yes. I have the sneaking suspicion that that will be the case. <laughs> Didn't, uh, Tarvin, didn't we send, like, two barrels of that really good wine to the ship? What? Like, in the second or third episode, when we ate dinner and there was, like, really good wine? Or was it coffee that we did? I thought we sent some, like, perishable to travel with us on the ship. I can't remember... Um, I didn't know if you had it in notes or not. I don't think I do. Okay, never mind then. Sorry. Uh, Neok, you find yourself uh, mildly curious. Your curiosity draws you toward a Valani uh, elderly woman who walks into the same common area of the ship. Uh, they're not. Ne she's not your near your table. Uh, she's sitting uh, elsewhere and seems to be uh, studying something. And in your observation of her, you notice that a few of the crew seem to be uh, giving her the stink eye a bit. Um, but no, no, no one's approaching her or anything, and no one's really bothering her. She doesn't seem to notice that she's being uh, observed. She's very engrossed in her data pad. Comrades. Will you excuse me while I talk to the newcomer? Of course. And I will move over to her. Greetings. My name is Neok N, union representative. I noticed that you are being frowned upon by the people around you. You look like you need a friend. Could this hiver be of service? She gives you a look over and makes a whistling noise. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. Hiver. Oh, neat. How interesting. How interesting. Yes, yes. A friend? Oh, sure. I could always use another friend. And me, Stink Guy? I mean, well, they did lose the war. I mean, they might take it a bit personally, these sorties. They lost the war. How fun for them. They yes. have the opportunity to grow better and stronger. That's how most hivers uh, get raised, so to speak. Who might you be? Who might you be? My name is represent Union Representative Neok N, a representative of the Vac Vaxuit Workers Union. Ah, oh, pleasure, pleasure. I'm a uh, trade merchant, Kelly Dier. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Well, the pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine. Would you happen to be in the... Well, I suppose you uh, don't really need a hat. I'm a haberdasher, you see. I sell hats. Not helmets, hats for, like, fashion and so on. I'm not sure how a hiver would... I mean, would you wear a hat? Would you wear it on your middle stock, I wonder? Mm hmm. She uh, taps at her thing, most interested. Hmm. 
Well, besides for a back suit or a harness like the one I'm wearing, uh, a hiver might not need clothing, except for in especially harsh weathers. Ooh, a harness hat. Yes, yes. You do the different colors, maybe to a warmer tone. Glances at your skin and kind of hums and haws, like, hmm, taps at things. You notice she's trying, she, she's, this old lady's kind of drawing out a, sketching out a hat or a top uh, for your back. And she keeps, she wipes it away and draws another one and wipes it away and draws another one, tries different colors. This is this is one of those. If a dog wore pants, would it wear it like this or this? Post, yeah. isn't it? You can't put it on the headstock because you know what, there's no like you know it's it's a stock. Where it would cover yeah, the eye stocks. To, there's nothing to perch it on. <laughs> well, would it still be a hat if it was on my back? But it'd be the, a top, a decorative for the uh, to heighten yourself and. Uh, draw eyes upon you. Although you did say you're a union rep, so you do want to see of the people, so we don't want to make it too fancy. I mean, you're not for landing, you're not trying to become noble or some nonsense. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, maybe a flatter one with a felt coloring. She goes on, she will go on at length about the various ways a hat could be designed. She does seem, uh, Xenophilic is a way to put it. She's very interested in trying to make things for different aliens, and that seems to be her thing, is that she makes hats for all kinds of people that aren't just humans. But she does humans too, because, you know, different culture groups have different requirements for hats. Fair enough. Something or, has to pay the rent. <laughs> uh, you do know that some of the people, some of the sword, sword Worlder crew that were here, uh, that were giving her the sink guy, kind of give you a look, but you know, again, no one's really making a move to close in or anything like that. They're just giving unfriendly looks as they go about their day. This interaction has been most pleasurable. I must return to my company so that we can continue to talk about starting a business together, as <gasps> friends do. Oh, of course, of course. Um, here. She produces a, uh, from her coat, a, a data slate, uh, a, basically a business card, but it's electronic. And she slides it over to you. If you ever need service, if you ever need my services, there's my contact information and my price listing. It will be most useful to have this. I shall treasure it until I get a hat and possibly after that. I bid you a good, what time is it? A good day. Good day, good day. And goodbye for now. Oh, and uh, uh, purple lavender to you. You recognize that she's trying to like speak to you in Hiver, but that doesn't really work because you need to actually be able to give off the pheromones and stuff. So she just said nonsense to you. <laughs> she just said the words purple lavender at you, which doesn't mean anything in Hiver because it's not the actual scent of purple lavender. And even then that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> and I mean, purple is within, but just another like a part of the spectrum that we see. Yeah. We see so a, a big spectrum. But yes, good try. Thank you. And you're able to rejoin the others. Your curiosity sated. Hello again. <laughs> Was your conversation pleasant? I might be getting myself a hat. We'll see how that turns out. Fascinating. All of you would look most splendidly in hats. Um, Especially you, Baronet. He's already wearing a hat. Remember, he has the uh, the turban. You can get a better turban. You can also you put a hat on your turban. Another hat. Yes. A hat on the turban. We call it the Ultra Turban. <laughs> As some oh, people boy. would say, especially in the Imperium, an uber turban. <laughs> <laughs> but I would refrain from using that term, as it might come off as, hmm, 
supremacist. You're going to be the most interesting traveling companion. Thank you. I'm I already really not much you of your company. I'm really not much of a hat so far, actually. Or a fez person, really. No. I would love to see Tarbin in a in a fez. That would be <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Talk about supremacists. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would look dandy in a flat cap. Mm. Especially emblazoned with the Union logo. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that polity. <laughs> oh, I was talking about the Vac Suit Workers Union. Oh, I... All I know about a vac suit is the basics of how to use it. I and think. when I'm done with you, you will be a master too. Well, if you will permit, that is. Let's. Sure. I might actually need to get vac suit training because Iblif does not have any. <laughs> okay. There it goes. Yeah. Well, well now I have to do on the journey. <laughs> yes, especially since we will be traveling at the same level, you and I. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because surprisingly, you have a baronet in the middle class with you. And chat says vac suit training sucks. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't. All right, if it does, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you have a week before uh, the ship arrives in the uh, Narsil uh, star system. What do the four of you do? Uh, r r remind me for the future. Um, Darien itself, it's only the sword worlds that's having the plague thing, right? Like, that... once we get into the Darien Confederacy, it's not a problem? It shouldn't well, be. Well, we know that we know that it potentially has the, the capability to be a true pandemic across, that crosses polities, but the only places we've been told where it's already shown up is within the Sword Worlds. But it okay. almost certainly is in the Darien Confederation. We just haven't heard about it. Right. Uh huh. Fun. Like, 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 it, like it, it's almost guaranteed to be a torrent, right? Already. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would think. But who knows? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's just like, uh, we might need to leave the starport on Darien, considering how much we're actually planning on doing there. We will have to, yeah. But you know what will help? Vac suits. <laughs> I like um, the way you think, Tarzan. They, they have their own onboard uh, environment. <laughs> They're this, sealed. This is, this is true. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, how long is the training for, like, learning... Like, for instance, the vac suit skill. You would have to be trying to use it uh, at some point during an adventure and it being important. And then, or you would take like t a time like this where you have a week of like, hey, I'm going to try to learn it and say, that's my learning, my life learning for the episode. And then at the end of the year, you would choose which of the things you've used during that year and that you would, the one you use the most would fire. So, let's, it, let's, so in uh, general, any skill you only improve a skill, a single skill by one each year. Okay, well, let's uh, start working on that then. Let's get some vac suit training done because I, I have nothing else help. to do. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Uh, let's make that a click on everything but what I need. No, let's make it a. Uh, Two D six dexterity for Iblifatil. Um which because this is hard, it turns into three. Um Niak N, would you be uh, assist, uh training the Baronet? Yes, or attempting to? I would I would be attempting to train the Baronet. So that you would uh, add his vax its vax skill uh to the number, which I think is eight. Which is good, because my dex is a seven. So eight plus seven, uh, 15, fifteen on three d six. Okay, fifteen on three d six. 
Oh my goodness. Just made it. Just made it. Uh, you learn. Thank you, by the skin of my teeth, and it scares me. So one thing that Neok and learns very, very quickly is that uh, Ibla Fatil has never put on an, a vac suit in his life, um, like ever. Like he's never been taught about it. He wasn't taught. Apparently, he comes from a world where that's not something you're taught about. Uh, um, so it's a lot of just you're you're not making him do anything particularly difficult. You're just explaining to him the different parts of a vac suit and why they matter. Um. Like, this is the airflow system, this is the filter, here's where the seals are. Um, and if you don't close the seal correctly, when going outside, your eyeballs will be sucked out into space. <laughs> and you will freeze to death. Any questions? <laughs> None at the moment, thank you. You've been quite informative. I aim to please... And you will also know, Dibba Fatil, that uh, although a hiver, uh, Neok N is incredibly versed in various sofans, so he there's no trouble of him going, oh, well, I know how to work with a with a humanoid. Like, that's not, he's taught, it's taught humanoids before. So this is, it isn't like, a, oh, here's how to put on a hiver suit. That, you know, Neok N knows enough to, to explain the different suits. Hey, well, that's what we've been doing for the week. How about our two high passage fancy pants characters? Well, actually, Ibo Fatil, you get to give me another endurance test of three dice. Uh, what? Because the Enoch has been infected. Oh, <laughs> good gall. <laughs> for the chat, what is a hiver? Uh, to, uh, for those who just joined more recently, a hiver is a. Think a starfish that's person sized. And has one of its stalks that reach out. Like, actually, I can make this a little bigger. So it looks like... I was going to say, you, you have a picture of it, right? Oh. Let's get one of the... Uh, make it so this check and see it a bit better. So... Yeah. Uh, they come from a part of the galaxy that's on the opposite end of known space. Uh, they do have other alien species. Are there sofans among them? Um, but they are very democratic and communal aligned uh, species who are known for being especially friendly. They're actually adverse. They don't like fighting. They do have a navy. They just don't like fighting in general. It would be unfair for other people to fight us. Well, it comes down to an instinct. Hiver's instinct when being attacked is to blend in with their environment or flee because they can, in most environments, they're pretty able, but they don't seem to have a problem with naval engagements. They're actually pretty good at naval fighting because apparently the instinct to flee doesn't fire if they are at a distance to the target. If you're not looking them in the face, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Huh, all right. So Hivers have a sense. reputation of being especially nice. And it's endurance. So I'm once again looking for an eight. Here we go. Pretty please. Nope. Oh, you got a you got a bit of a sniffle going on by the end of the, uh, hmm. during the week. Hmm. Hey, well, at least our biologist will have like you know case studies. <laughs> yeah. Um. Remind me, is this plague deadly? Oh, actually, um, I apologize. Nothing happens. Your psi shield kicks in. Right. I forgot. You use a different oh, stat when, when dealing with uh, psionic uh, activity. Oh. Okay. Wait, it's so a psychic? Go away on its, own. It's, it's a psychically transmitted plague? Yes. Yeah. Ah. It's, it's really scary. <laughs> How does that work? Uh, you Your various psionic uh, senses tingle. Like all uh, the two that you have uh, kind of flare for a bit and then you just kind of, you're able to kind of shake it off. Imagine if someone grabbed a bunch of pepper and tossed it in your face to make you sneeze and you kind of, re you, ah. you just kind of resisted the sneeze. It's like, ah, that's startling, but I can kind of, ah, get this pepper away from me. There, I'm good. Uh, okay, but, but I meant more along the lines of how does a psychically transferred plague work? That's a question for biologists <laughs> it's, and scientologists. It's, it's, Terrifyingly, that's how I told you. <laughs> well, I'm glad I. Uh... So does that mean I'm immune to it, or did I just shrug it off this one time? But future, you, you, you resisted the infection. 
Which anyone who's psychically trained would be fair, would have a better chance at because they'd have 10 plus on the, ch on the check. As they have, you generally have a, a baseline shield. Ah, cool. Cool. Wait, so does that mean I just have a higher stat in the future or I won't have to make this roll anymore? Maybe. No, I mean, it means the Shodani consulate has decided that since they couldn't take the Empire out through standard military means, now they're going to biological weapons, the fuckers. <laughs> What are uh -oh. Hervor and uh, Tarbin up to during all this? Arguing. About? about? I don't know. We, well, we, it's a conversation we probably need to wait on to have with everybody, but we need to figure out kind of what kind of jobs we want our company to take on and what kind of jobs we don't, we're just, by and large, going to try not to be interested in. Well, if Tarbin's starting up this conversation, then, then what does he envision being the problem? Well, I mean, you know, I, if... <laughs> also, it's not a discussion for everyone. It's a discussion for shareholders. Right, but the third shareholder's not here. Oh, okay. I, he's, I on, was just... he's on the ship. He's just busy doing other things that don't involve yeah. arguing about this. <laughs> also, also, he only has one share, so if you and me agree, it doesn't matter what he thinks. <laughs> right. Um, well, well my whole thing is, you know... Look, I, I'm a bear of many parts, but, you know, I don't really, I'm not particularly interested in, at this stage in my life, going and doing things that makes the universe a worse place. Uh, but that's a matter of perspective. To me, the Empire claiming one more system makes the universe a worse place, which I doubt it does to you. So we really would have to get into specifics. Are you about well, to get ambushed by the hat lady? <clears throat> Hello! Well, ah! <laughs> uh, do, do we know you? Well, Not yet, but you will now. Lounge. <laughs> I'm the merchant uh, Khalid Diar. Hello, I'm Tarbin Arctos, and this is my associate, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Hervor, and against Tyr's daughter. Retired, of course. Ah, hello. What was this about attacking the Empire? I mean, I don't find it particularly a good idea for the Sword Worlders, but, you know. Uh, I don't think anyone mentioned attacking the Empire. Ah. But we're, we were discussing whether the Empire's expansion was a net positive or a net negative for the universe as a whole. Well, why not? The Warrant of Restoration is good for everyone. Free trade, free movement... No more of that silly warring among yourselves? The Iron Hand of the Empire is a little too Iron Hand for the Sword Worlds. Iron? Oh, how plebeian. No, of course not. It'd be Iridium. Sparkling and dazzling in its and, softness and pliability. And, and, and seriously, aren't you like you know, an outlier for being a female at a high rank at the Sword Order military? Does, did your whole culture kind of keep women tied to the hearth fires and whatnot? Oh, the guy, some of the sword worlds start crowding up to the table. That that, uh, got, that got some people kind of pissed off. <laughs> what the hell it, did you just it's, say? It's <laughs> misunderstanding. What did you do? <laughs> kind of, but it's a misunderstanding, right? It's it's acceptable, right? If I'm good at it, sure, I'd be looked down upon if I was bad at it. But when you're good at it, people let those things go. That's an honorable warrior you're talking about. The hell's your problem, Bear? Now, I, now, I we don't need to, to be fr we don't need to be hostile with each other. Everything's fine. I, yeah, I'll turn around to the other sword worlders and say, <laughs> "This is a conversation between me and the bear. If you would like to see how honorable I am, you can continue. Otherwise, <laughs> please leave." As long as you have it under control, honorable warrior. They give they give the two the the Tarbin and uh, the merchant a look and kind of carry on with their day. I'm just saying that you know most interstellar polities have various aspects of either their politics or their culture or their government or their religion that to other interstellar polities uh, seem oppressive. You know, and I'm not really talking about political things. I'd rather avoid being involved in directly political things. I'm just saying, okay. 
fighting uh, some sort of disease, say, or doing something that helps that, getting mail to people, getting, uh, you know, uh, expanding the knowledge of the universe, whether that's, you know, taking, uh, I don't know, being paid as private uh, scouts and surveyors or something, that kind of thing, rather than, you know, mercenary work or kidnapping or the various other kind of, you know, gray market, gray area kind of uh, jobs that are out there. I'm just noticing that there's there seems to be a wide variety of business opportunities out there, some of which I'm just not particularly comfortable with, and some of which seem to add more to the general level of entropy in the universe, uh, while others seem to kind of help or help things stick together a little better. If the money's right, the money's right. I, I, uh, I do not have the skills or the disposition to go off and fight for art, do scientific work, do administrative work, right? I know a lot of ways to win fights and conquer and destroy those are my skills i Ooh, i can't I have be a thought useful. what is it well you can get the cell sword here to help you explore uh planets that are uh otherwise fairly hostile some places, uh, their amber or red uh, aligned, may be uh, still have scientific and mercantile needs, but a firm, swordy hand could uh, give them a good smack up the head or axe or whatever it is you do. Yeah, I mean, she's not wrong. And even when it comes to uh, 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 surveying planets, I mean, there are a lot of planets with some critters that really don't understand much of anything except a beam weapon to the head trust me on that i'm just saying we can you know you could put your sword in the service of the general betterment now look you know i served in the navy for a term because i was uh, i'm an imperial citizen and i grew up in the empire and they oh you're naval so oh went. how nice no i'm just I've served in the navy during the war because they needed trained engineers and i'm a trained engineer ah <clears throat> But, you know, I'm also an Ursa. Honestly, none of you humanity firm, none of you members of humanity can really be trusted beyond a certain point. Um, I'm a, I'm, I agree with you that, with the only exception being other sword world, there's 99% of humanity, I think, is untrustworthy. Uh, you, know, you all look a lot like Soleimani to us. So anyway... Um, oh come oh, on! Boy. You're better than that, Ursine. The Valani have treated the uh, your people with kindness and trade. As far as we're concerned, you have tr credit and skill. It's the uh, Terrans who want to lock themselves to old ways. Few so Worlders <laughs> look like they want to come up, but they give a look at her. Like, can we just beat her up, please? <laughs> like they look, they look like they would be attacking her if you weren't standing, sitting right there at her table. Um. No, no, I, and I understand that. I'm, I'm just saying that, on some level, it, it's more centuries are going to have to pass before my people look at anybody who's the basic humaniform, with, uh, without a certain level of distrust underneath. Oh, that's understood. I, one has to be cautious but, of those who have lost trust, after all. So, no. and but, us sword worlders would like nothing to do with any of you, but <laughs> you keep coming and expanding in this direction so something has to be done well honestly to to be fair what happened was you sword worlders allied with the Jodani and attacked the empire we attacked first but you and rapidly then lost and on that we're going to take uh, as the arguing uh well debating will be nice about it the debating continues and the condescending Valani lady <laughs> uh, <laughs> continues to interject ever so helpfully. Um, we're going to take a short break uh, for a few minutes, uh, stretch our legs, get some drinks, and we'll be back in a bit. Sounds like a plan. <laughs>
I am back. Me too. I think everyone's back. I don't think oh, no, it nice. Yeah. Uh oh. Computer? It's there we go. It lifts a tall. Right, yeah. Cool. Yeah, the atoll part is their title in um the Zidani language. To so either be Baronet Iblif or Iblifatil. Cool. Uh, we are currently broadcasting, by the way. So. Yeah, I know. I knew. I just flipped it back. Uh huh. Yeah, because once once I unmute, that's when I click us back on. But. Uh, we have, so some discussion is had, uh, but eventually, uh, the ship will arrive, assuming, uh, no, uh, assault of the ever so helpful hat lady, uh, occurs from, uh, the, you fine travelers. No. Uh, you'll... The hat, hat lady's not really bothering me. That much. <laughs> She's not bothering me at all. Oh, she has to try harder then. No, no, she's, she's 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 a weird hat lady. I mean, I like her. She makes yeah. sense. But I you're... leave you guys alone in high passage for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking, and all these other people started having opinions <laughs> they weren't even involved in the they? conversation but you arrive uh at the world of narsil a industrial uh planet 
of high population and heavily industrialized and they're going to be here for about two days oh, um, oh. Mm -hmm. it's, time, it's time to trade hey hey, hey corby y'all um if i've been exposed to the virus but i fought it off am i now a carrier we don't know a whole lot about this virus i don't think oh wonderful <laughs> that's why that's why we were trying to get the uh professor to uh, the good database so you can start researching oh that reminds me uh for uh the hiver i require endurance of 3d6 yes sir That is not great. Oh no. Uh your endurance stat has been reduced by two, as you feel particularly fatigued. You weren't you haven't been able to you weren't able to sleep very well during the week. Is it a temporary Stocks? setback? Or it's a temporary a... setback, yeah. Good. So my endurance. Alright. And it seems a good chunk of the crew seems to be kind of down in the dumps and not feeling terribly great either. So some of them are going to be stopping by the local Star City Hospital and getting checked in and stuff to make sure they're okay. Uh, Corby? Mm hmm You said the last planet everyone was feeling exhausted, right? Yeah, yeah. Guys. <laughs> I think we have a problem. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a problem we can't do anything about at this stage. True. <laughs> um. Did you uh, uh did would would Nock N or Nock N mention? Actually, can you? How easy did, is it to tell if? Because like when you look at a person, you can tell what they're like. You look at a human. And humans can tell that another human is tired. Give me three D six intelligence. Oh, of course. I was gonna say, does a hot does a hiver look tired? Okay, that is. Oh boy, uh, pretty sure that's n that's a no. Yeah, you don't know enough about hiver uh, biology to recognize what tired looks like to them, unless they straight tell I... you. Would I have recognized? When my psi shield came on, the whole, like, like what the source was. You could give me, I believe you have an intuitive that would help you with this. I do, in fact, yeah. What kind of intuition do you have again? Um, intuition seven. No, which one? There's three of them. <laughs> he, he got the he got the one you get for rolling highest. Oh, in, insight. Yeah, I wrote the word intuition, unfortunately, because that's what I remembered. <laughs> insight, yeah. insight is the word. Oh, insight, insight is why don't we try this or why you know or see or puzzle yeah. out a correct action. Ah. Uh, hmm. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. So hang you on. said that uh, the uh, the perception thing lets you sense life forms, essentially, right? And I can tell the difference between um, I can tell the difference between like like a like you know bio, uh, bacteria, viruses, whatnot, and like a sentient being. Yeah, more or less. Would I be able to potentially tell if somebody's infected? Give me... Let's call this 3d6. Using your, um, your psi perception. Or sorry, psi awareness, isn't it? Awareness or perception? Uh, well, perception. Awareness, is, awareness is the magnetic fields. Right, stuff. so be psi perception. You're right. Psi perception. Cool. Well, that is a 30, so... Uh, 
Uh, yeah, you notice that uh, most of the Sword Roller crew is uh, does have some sort of illness among them, uh, circulating about their aura and uh, seeming to uh, munch and uh, nibble at the edges of the life force. There also seems to be one around Neok N. Okay, what about my other companions? Uh, you... It seems that Arctos and Hervor seem to be fine. And myself? Um, you feel all right. O okay. Do I... Am, am I carrying the thing on me? Uh, you have Scientology, don't you? I do, in fact. I'll treat that as... Three die intelligence... Plus your Scientology. What's your Scientology rank? Uh, it's two. Two? So this is hard. Four dice? Oh, boy. Just okay. two. You're not clear yet. you still got some Thetans. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and my intelligence... You said intelligence, right? Yeah, I all. Great. So that is 4d6, and I'm trying to make an eight. Okay. Yeah, no. You're not sure. Hmm. This is a rather novel disease that you've only learned about within the last couple weeks, right? So. Okay. Well, now to tell them. Actually. Yeah, you meet up with their each uh, again as you're as the ship docks at the port and people start disembarking and getting a. Uh, Getting, uh, and making their arrangements to go to the local hospital to get checked in with the doctors and so on. Um, do the rest of us, or does Tarbin notice that some crew members aren't feeling well? And oh yeah, that, it's pretty obvious. Like it's it's kind of a it's kind of the buzz around the crew. Like yeah, we should probably get checked in and stuff. Maybe maybe we caught something back in the last planet. We should probably get checked out just to make sure. But it's it's a very like low level concern. Sometimes people catch colds when they go places. It happens. All right, but Tarbin is also aware of the potential. <clears throat> plague so um, yeah so when we get the chance to talk away from everyone else Iblif at all is going to say we have a very serious problem what kind of problem is that <laughs> <laughs> well so the, the, I, the vocoder I, translates the, the vo your... vocoder translates the coughs there's a faint smell of sandalwood coming from the uh, hiver that's a um, new smell. That is... Uh, so, during our, our most recent voyage, um, I perceived something peculiar. As a result, I... Oh, there's no point really hiding it. I'm, I am... But I am a Jodani, and you're... Assumptions are probably correct in that I do possess some psionic training. Um, so well, I... I would never have noticed. I, so, I, I assume you mean you possess psionic ability towards other people, not towards me, right? Because... I, I have... The only thing I have done is... Towards me? I did it toward <laughs> everybody on the ship because I was worried. There that's, that's the one is, free time. I, again, and we have this, to start. This was, uh, of course, if I was separating heads from shoulders. If I had been able to communicate with you at the time, I would have asked permission first. However, given that I was checking for a plague, I felt oh. it was necessary. Oh, maybe maybe I should just like stab you and then ask for permission. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Well, now, now we don't if you, need if... to get hostile, even though that is well, well within your. Right. Uh, All right. So I, I I promise I will not read your mind or stab you. Would you like to promise the same? Just just let him I finish. Say, it's a plague. I thing. was I wasn't even reading your mind. Anyway, regardless, the entirety, of all of the soul sword wielders on the crew are infected. Uh, you should share this with the professor. I intend to. Uh, as well as um, 
our newest friend here is also infected. Hello, mm. I am Neil Ken. <laughs> All right, could you not stand so close? <clears throat> Sorry, what? The scent of sandalwood gets stronger. Uh, I mean, okay. I, the bear I, packs up a little bit away. That's probably it's a little strong. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm gonna wipe the outside of the armor off. <laughs> Um, it appears that this plague, well, I, I have theories, of course, I don't, I can't confirm this. I believe it's spread psionically. You, you should share this with the professor. I, I intend to. That's um, what the, uh, the devotee intimated to us. Yes, what, what has... <laughs> Well, I, I believe I can confirm that um, when I was in the presence of our friend here, uh, Representative Niak N, um, he had been giving me a training on uh, vac suits because I do not possess the skill yet, and I feel it may be useful in the future. And uh, my, uh, I was able to stop the infection with my, uh, well, we call it a shield. So, is this spread by proximity? By, uh... I believe it is by proximity. Mm. But I cannot make any firm statements on that. Wait just a moment. The, the bear's going to go put on his advanced back suit. <laughs> uh, give me a vac suit of two dice plus dexterity. Okie dokie. Do you have any vac suit training? I do. Uh, I've got vac suit one, but I also have uh, jack, jack of all trade trades two to yeah. avoid this is hard. Well, we all... So 13 on two dice. Uh, and this is a high dollar vac suit. Says it, do it does give me psi shield four. Uh oh, fancy. Yeah, it, it should be fancy for what it costs. <laughs> that looks correct to me. You have done a good job putting on your vac suit. Oh, I'm just hoping it's worth what I paid for it. So, oh, is that the same? One is, that, that one is very good. I highly recommend it. If good you have the that. money. <laughs> so, no, noting that for later. What about all of the sick crew members? Is that the same? Are we dealing with the same virus there? They all shared the same... Oh, that's not a good word for it. Aura? Essentially, so... they all they all were suffering from the same condition that I was able to notice. So they all smelled wrong in the same way? Yes. Yes, that's a good way to put it. Or they all that had something affected. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Ursa are also very scent-based people. <laughs> yeah. We do have much in common, you and I. Right. Except for the plague, apparently. <laughs> yes, for the time being. You, you, you should go to the hospital. I should. Goodbye. That, that... Well, wait. Nia, do you have a vac suit that might have some level of size shielding? That's a good question. I will have to look through my baggage. Uh, you could have a standard vac suit for 10,000 of your credits or 20, hold on, or 20,000 of your credits for an advanced vac suit. Which one would serve me better? Advanced would be better. Then I will take an advanced. Ew. I would like to have an older model, if I may, oh. on the other hand, for a slight discount. Sure, let's... I've had it for a while. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna crebs you. <laughs> let's knock off... Uh, 3,000 off that, so 17,000. 
All right. Yep. And I'll, I'll keep that in mind that it's an older version for any Q rep rolls or failure rolls. That might help prevent you from spreading the disease further. Uh, Nyak N, you, if you want to put on the suit, it would be two dice dexterity plus your vac suit skill. Easily done. That's well, that's within your skill. Yeah, it takes, it takes me like four minutes and it's done easily. Uh, 17, all right. Uh, that would put me at, I'll, I'll be back. So 13k. Yes, you are good at math. I am not. No, I had a calculator. <laughs> I just had it open and just happened to be cheating. looking that up. <laughs> I was doing math for something else. <laughs> well, it's better to do math for something else than to do math for something else. Am right. I right, fellas? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so the, the question now becomes, do we stay on this ship as we plan to through Darien, or do we find another passage? Find another passage. Is are we going to be able to find one that doesn't have this problem? I was going to say, is there a can first off, is there a cancellation fee since we originally booked passage all the way through? And uh, second... There wouldn't be for... No, no, we can. We've already covered this. We can transfer right. our passages. Okay, good, good. We could always um, ask for a refund since we all got infected here. At least that's um, what we can say. Well, let's not. We might not want to raise the alarm about rapidly spreading infections uh, until that, we're well unfortunately, away. Unfortunately, that goes against my morals. It's a good idea to tell people that there is a risk. No, that's fair enough. I Such as not closing your, out, uh, your um, uh, helmet seal and getting your eyeballs sucked out into space. <laughs> that's an anecdote. Um, Tarbin, do I you would... want to look around for alternate transportation? Yeah. Um, let's see if we can maybe book passage uh, if there's something that Darien. runs from, say, Darien to Narsal and back. Well, before uh, you maybe. do that, before okay. you resolve that, uh, you all four of you have to put uh, pay out your social standing because you've hit the end of the oh, month. It's oh, so you're you have to pay your social standing times one hundred to maintain your social standing. That is very strange. It covers uh, it covers your general like food, clothing, cost and, of living, uh, yeah. cost of living, yeah, the year, yeah. Well, in a given month. Oh, a month, yeah. Uh, Food, clothes, lodging, basic entertainment. Uh, so times so 10, that's a thousand. Times 100, not times 10. Oh. It times 100, yeah. Yeah, a thousand. The, the, my answer was right. My, <laughs> uh, my number transposition in my head was wrong. Is anybody having trouble hitting that? Um, I have no credits to my name currently. No, wait, no, that's a lie. We can, we got paid. All right. We got paid 7,000 credits. We got paid 7,000. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said it was 10 times our social standing? No. 100 right. times. 100. 100. Oh, so that's 1,200 for me. <laughs> yep. The, the cost of looking, uh, being up, uh, acting your social standing. Okay, so I I can't I can pay that because I have the I have the seven thousand. That also covered that also as a sort of background thing also covers any taxes and all the other like minuscule things that you would have to do to maintain your social standing. Ah uh, darn, my tax bracket. Yeah. Well, you have to contribute to the consulate. You are looking out for the Jadani people and all things, right? Of course, of course. It is a privilege to pay taxes to the Hiver. Yes. What the, what's the name of the? Do they have a name as like an empire? Like the, uh, the High Federation. The high Federation. Because Federation. Federation. I blanked on the on the rest of the name. Okay. Because the, 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 the feder it's a federation of various species, including human uh, some humanity species. Some uh, solo many live among the uh, have embraced uh, federation values. 
Yeah, sure they have. And they are a welcome addition. Give them a minute. They've had a couple centuries, actually. <laughs> <laughs> They've had, like, more centuries to interact with us than most of humanity. That's true. Most of the landing don't go that far, uh, tr um, spinward. Spinward? I mean, I mean Rimward, yeah. sorry. We've had the interstellar drive for, I believe it's 12,000 years. Yeah. Oof. Give or less, give or take. Um, yeah. We are everywhere. You are in this corner. For your convenience. Yes. We are everywhere for your convenience. That's correct. That's entirely right. Speaking of being everywhere, I have to be somewhere. Okay. That is a hospital. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I suppose the rest of us should look for hopefully not infected passage. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm thinking something that has just come in from uh, the Darien side, the Darien uh, Federation. And it's heading back. And yeah. I can I could scan them for infection. Yeah. I have Oops. remember to ask nicely first. No ability <laughs> to do either of those things, so I'm gonna look for a good deal in case you find something that has a little bit of cargo tonnage. Okay. Because yeah, I I don't have any any ability to help in steward or anything like that. Okay. Would you like to come to the hospital with me? We might find someone there who might not need their ship anymore. I'm dead person. Uh, generally, then it's going to be given to the local baron or knight or sold off uh, and put in the state treasury, right? It's not going to be given to the random person who showed up and asked for it. They might sell it to you at a higher rate than it would cost. But and if you I, ask for it while yeah, wearing I, super body armor. I don't have mega credits on me. <laughs> Neither do I have resource units. So trading in ships with dying people is not like unless they're going to sell it to me for around, uh, you know, a millionth of its value. Uh, it's not worth, worth it. <laughs> there is an old Hiver saying <laughs> that is well that's not very much of a saying <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't hurt to ask and actually in the sword worlds if you ask the wrong thing someone will attack you oh so it, no it actually can't hurt to attack misjudged you <laughs> <laughs> my 30 years in the soul world in the sword worlds have not taught me anything sarcasm <laughs> uh, crack, crack. Uh, that's just the bear stretching in the background you look very tall when you do that careful mm. not to scratch the paint so yes the bear will head out into the uh, starport and the, I, I guess the departures and arrivals uh, terminal to see what's going on and if there might be passage bookable that's not spent too much time in the sword world. Well, funny you should mention that. And it will need to be jump to capable because we have that the gap the void to cross I can help with that oh it helps if I put it on the correct layer there we go What do you call a Saurian that lives in space? Brandy? An astrogator. Gamera? 
<laughs> oh god, no. So, Tarbin, uh, where are you going into the starport in particular? Well, I mean, is there not a uh, place in the TAS where there's, you know, you can uh, look at the arriving and departing schedules and where there's... Well, there, there's the starport one, and then there's the Travel Jade Society thing. Like, the society is its own thing apart from the starport. It's just that they... Oh, they're in every starport because that's where most of travelers go. Right, but I mean, first I'm going to see you know if there are any ships meeting that criteria and you know that are taking passengers. So I guess I'd start in the Travelers Aid Society. Uh, for that information. Okay, so go look up this planet again. Ha. Huh. Nursil. Uh, so you notice that here in the Ultranil, uh starport, uh, the starport you can see is very, uh, like, even the minute you step off the ship, the, unlike the other planets you've been to, it is just wall-to-wall yeah. -wall people. It's just, there's just so many different sofas moving around and going this way and that way. Uh, some of it is, a lot of it is people, a lot of people, like, this is the terminus for most travelers who are coming from, uh, Beater all the way out to Narsil, because most people aren't trying to do the gap jump to Spoom. This is, right. like, the end, this is one terminal of a trade route for a lot of people, for a lot of ships, so you see a ton of free traders here, government ships, military ships, uh, traders talking to other traders, uh, the Susac people, corporate people, other corporate people, uh, now, thank you as a bearer. Uh, most people aren't willing to get in your way terribly much. Uh, and you are able to shoulder your way through the crowd. Um, and I will note that as you're moving around, uh, peering out the windows, you can, as you're passing by some of the windows, you see that uh, it is thick with a uh, haze of smog that makes the distant buildings that the starport is nestled in uh, hard to see, even though they are more or less just across the street. And you get the feeling if you were not in a vac suit outside of the starport, uh, you might be having a bit of an issue taking a full breath without breathing uh, in five, ten different pollutants. Uh, but the starport itself is kept rather clean because, well, starports tend to be environmental controlled areas. Right. Um, there are a variety of Sword World. You do notice the presence of Sword World per, uh, military personnel, kind of uh, a lot more than normal, who seem to be standing alongside the Starport Authority security, which that's unusual. You don't normally see local world military in Starport. Oh boy, like that. something's up. But eventually, you make your way to the uh, Travelers Aid Society uh, lounge. And it is bustling in here. Lots of people are trying to talk to the secretary, trying to ask them questions. And they, there's people looking up stuff and connecting their pads and talking among themselves. It is utter chaos in here. Something's wrong. Uh, well, I think I'll just say, hey, we just we just hit ground. What goes on? Just asking someone who card. Uh, show him. In the slot, in the slot. Oh, in the slot. Looks it up. Tarbin, Arctos, like to remember. Yes, what? What was the question? So we, we just touched ground. What's happening? Some sort of sickness. Some sort of plagues hit the whole port. Everyone's trying to find a way to get off planet before they lock down the starport. If you don't want to be stuck here, you better leave, like, now. Uh, that is the plan. You got a ship? Um, 
Well, our ship 